In this video series, you're going to learn how to create a Google Null. A Null is defined as a unit of knowledge by Google. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to walk you through how to create a Null and then how to monetize it. There are a couple ways to monetize your Null. You can use Google AdSense and you can also link to another one of your sites that's related. You need a Google account, which is free to set up, to be able to use the Null. What we want to do first is we want to determine what we're going to write about. Now, there are some rules to the null. You're not supposed to write it like you would a blog entry. This is not, in fact, a blog. It is something like a wiki. So what you want to do is just the facts. That's what you want to write about. So we'll go ahead and we'll get started. So first thing you want to do is sign in and then just click write a null. Now, once you get in here, you have several parts that you can work on. Now, first of all, you have your title, your subtitle, and then down here, you have the summary, and then you start writing your article down here. This is the most simple thing that you're going to do, is adding the content. There are some other tools that we'll go over after we go over some basics about writing your content. Now, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you do some things so that your null gets seen high in the search engines after all you do want people to see it now it will show in google search engine and other search engines as well as in the null search so what you're going to want to do in your heading is you're going to want to make it keyword rich without being spammy so make sure that your main keyword is in the title next you have a space for a subtitle. This is optional, but I suggest you put it in here because it gives the people that are reading your null an idea of what it's about, and it's also good for keywords. So let's put an effective subtitle in there that does the job. Okay, so we got our subtitle in there. It automatically brings up the author name, which is the name on your Google account. Down here you have a rating spot where people can rate your article. And here we have the summary. Oh, affiliation also. If you're affiliated with a company or with an organization, you can put your affiliation or affiliations in this box. Now a summary, this also is a good thing to have in here. It just gives a quick summary of what your article is going to be about. A good way to do this is to not actually take paragraphs out of your main article but to write a summary of what you're going to say in the article. Now, before we start writing, let's go over the tools we have at the top. These are self-explanatory. Save will save the contents of your null. Close will close it. This is an undo and a redo. These are your formats here. If you click on that, you can format your headings, superscripts and subscripts, your fonts, font sizes and alignments are all within the formats. And then the rest of them are standard stuff, bold, italic, underline. And when you put your cursor on top or your mouse pointer, it tells you what each of them are. So if you're not sure what they are, you can just put your mouse pointer on it and it shows you what they all do. You can also use the HTML button if you want to actually put HTML source within your article. Okay, so let's go and write a summary about what our article is going to be about. Okay, so we have something like that in there. Now, alternative titles. You can put an alternative title in here if you want. It helps people find your article. So let's say Gardening Basics. And then you just start writing your article in here. Now, you can just write right directly in here if you want and use the tools up here to format everything or you can use an external editor and then paste it inside here. doesn't matter what you want to do. Now I've opened the article I'm going to use in Word and you could just do the same if you want. You can just edit in Word and then paste it in which may be easier in some cases or you can use the tools like I said that are right in the null. So if you wanted to you could just go ahead 
and paste it right in here and then edit it later. Depends how you want to do it. So let's just grab all of this, do a copy, and then let's just paste it in here. And there it is. Now, if we highlight this, any text we highlight, we can use the tools up above. So if we want to bold that, we just click B and it's bolded. Now, under format, you see we have format here. If we were to make this a heading H2, what this will do is it will not only make the text bigger, but it also creates our table of contents for us. So if we had different headings in here, for instance, we put the next day here. And we would highlight this, go back up to format. And then we're, we were to make this an H3. This becomes part of our table of contents as well underneath the H2. Everything under this is just content. Now, let's say we have conclusion here. And we make this an H2 again. Highlight it, format H2. And there it is there. Now, let's save this. Just click Save. And our work is now saved, so we could go outside of the null without losing anything. Now, if we were to go and view this now, so let's close, and look what has happened here. Here's our contents, which lines up with what we put in here. So if we click the next day, you notice that it has gone down to our subtitle called the next day. And if we go to the top and click conclusion, it goes down to position itself down at the bottom here. So that's how you get your table of contents in there. Now, as I mentioned before, we can do a link to one of our external sites in here. And a good place to do that would be at the bottom of your article or within your article. So let's go back to edit. And then at the bottom here, we could just say, for more information, go and have a look at my website on gardening or something like that. Depends, put any text here that you want. Make sure that your keyword is in there so that it helps you show up in the search engines. Okay, so here it is here. So all we have to do is highlight this text now, then go up to the top and where it says link Click on that and then put the web address here where you want them to go when they click the link. Okay, so there's our link there. Then what we can do is we can click here to test the link. We'll click and there it has opened our blog for us so we know that that's done right. When we're satisfied with that, just click OK. And if we go down here now, you'll see that we have our link all ready to go. Okay, so that's how we get our article in there and get it all set up. Now there are some other things we need to go over, how to get our AdSense on there, how to set up our profile, and some things about moderation and collaboration. And we're going to do that in the next video. Now let's have a look at all the settings that we can set up to make our null easier to edit and for people to find and so on. Okay, so when you first come in and you click on account, you can see, and click on my nulls, you can see the nulls that you have. Now there's one here with your name on it that is a special one that's created the first time you come in, which is for your profile. So first of all, let's go and create our bio. 
So if you click on my bio, it brings up a little place that you can tell people about yourself. So basically all it is, is it's a place where you can just write your bio in here. And it, it tells you here that it was created. It's a special and all write about yourself. So all you have to do is click edit. And then you can write anything you want in here about yourself. Same thing goes, it's got it all the same places, your affiliations, a summary if you want it, and then your alternate titles and a little bio about yourself down here. Okay, so something like that. And then we can just save that. Okay, so that's all there is to that. You can also click on edit my profile and here you can change your photo and you can put some other information about yourself in here occupation a little bit about you in here and a link to a site on your profile with a name so you can add these things in here as well so what we'll do is we'll again put a link to our gardening blog down here and then we could add other links as we go Okay, so click add okay and then as we write more nulls we can put our links in here with our profile again if you want to put a picture in here you just click there and then you get a chance to upload it from your computer just click browse find it on your computer and upload it once you're done with all this you can just create your public profile now this profile is actually your Google profile, not just a profile for your nulls. Okay, now the other thing we want to go over is some settings. So if we go into settings, now once we come in here, the first thing we have is the license for all of our nulls. Now, we have different types of license. We have Creative Commons 3 license, Creative Commons non-commercial, and all rights reserved. If you don't know what these are, you can click Details, and then it pops up and tells you what people are allowed to do with the content that you have within here. So pick the one that you want to use, and all rights reserved is a copyright, meaning that the information you have cannot be shared without your permission. Down here, we have the default collaboration mode, which you can change on each null if you want. But this will be the default settings. So open collaboration means that all sign-in users can edit your null. And this is what collaboration means. If people want to improve what you have on there, and you have either open co collaboration or moderated collaboration, people can go in and change things for you. However, if you have moderated collaboration, then you actually have to approve the changes that people have made. So you can make this however you want it. I'm going to leave this one at moderated collaboration. AdSense, we talked about this before. If you want to associate a Google AdSense account with your null, you do it here. So if you have an existing account, you would fill in the information here. And if you want to create a Google AdSense account after you set up your null, you can do it here. And then they'll set, they'll approve it for you and the ad will start to show. So just fill in the appropriate information here. Okay, so once you click save after you filled all that out, it tells you that you've successfully set it up. Okay, so it's told us that it is action needed we have to check the email and then do what it tells us in the email to activate the ads okay so we've got everything set up the way we want here make sure you save on this side as well let's go back to my nulls and then let's bring up the one we were working on here okay so here 
you'll see that our null is unpublished. So when we're ready for it to be seen by the public, all we have to do is publish it. We have moderated collaboration and we have Creative Commons Attribution 3 license. And it's like that because we didn't change the defaults till after we created this. So all we have to do is click on change and then we can change to all right reserved. Then if we want ads in the know, okay, and there we go. We can show our AdSense ads by clicking that and we can set that as the default. Okay, and we can save our changes. Now you notice along the top here, we have some other things. We have owners, authors, and reviewers. So let's click owners. Owners have full control over the null, so they can change the licensing and whether ads are shown, as well as what authors can do. Authors are people that can edit and modify the content, and you can invite authors just by clicking this. And that works the same way with the owners as well. Reviewers. You can invite people to review your site, just the same way. And then if it's published, you can unpublish or delete it right here. Okay, you see, it says your AdSense account is under review, so they're, they're telling us that our ads will start showing once they've approved it, and it can take up to two weeks, as it says here. Now we also have revision history. If we click on revisions, you can see everything we've done since we first started the null. So initial creation, title rename, subtitle rename, alternative title modifications, etc. It tells you what you did at every point along the way. But what this allows you to do is to compare the differences between any two of them. For instance, we can do this and compare them. pair of the checked ones and it highlights the things that are different. Go back to revisions. It also allows you to roll back. So if you wanted to roll back to a previous version, all you have to do is click on it. So if we click on four we'll roll back to version four. So we could have just modified that from that one and saved it and that would have been rolled back to that version plus any changes we made. Okay, so I went in and made a revision here. Let's just have a look. If we go into edit, we're going to view. What I did was I changed the article because one of the rules is that we don't create it like a blog and the particular article I chose was more like a narrative. So I changed it to how to prepare soil Then I went through the same steps setting the headers the way I wanted them and that created my table of contents. Okay so we're all ready so I'm just going to go ahead and publish this one and now it's published and it would be able to be seen in the search engines once it's indexed. Now there is a bit of a problem with this. I won't call it a problem so much as a slight issue. And that is that it can take up to two to three weeks for it to even start showing in a search engine and sometimes longer. So a good way to speed things up is to link it. And there is a place you can link it within the null system. And in the resources document, you will find a link that you can go to. And here's where you can come to here and you can add your null in here and that'll help it get indexed faster.
So all we have to do is edit it. And the reason this works is because the collaboration has been set in here. And down here, we can pick where we want to go. Okay, so let's just add gardening in here since I don't already have it. And we'll highlight it. Then we'll go up and we'll make it an H2. And under here, we'll put a link to our null. paragraph text and then we highlight it and put the URL in here so we'll go back copy the URL from the bar up top there highlight link paste our link in here okay Okay, so we've edited the linking area here, the linking null, and we're in here, and now we'll get some traffic from that. And all we have to do is save it. And close. Now if we go gardening and we click here, There it goes. It takes us to our node. Okay, so that is how we get our node up and running. Now in the next video, I'm just going to go over a way that you can actually start making money using null and blogs. This way you can set up a little money-making sideline without ever having to purchase a domain or hosting or anything else. You can do this all for free. So I'll talk about that in the next video. In this video, I want to go over a simple way that you can take advantage of the traffic you get from your null to make some money by putting it into your blog. So you'll funnel your traffic from your null to your blog and vice versa. This can be very powerful because you end up with a lot of pages with a lot of information on them and you will attract a lot of people. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is create a blog. Now you can either create it on WordPress or on Blogger. I'm going to do it on Blogger because it's the simplest one to set up without having to pay anything. WordPress also has a free service that you can use as well. But let's go to the Blogger dashboard. And then we'll just create a new blog. And then you would create a blog that was along the same lines as your null. In other words, on the same niche. Okay, so something like that. Check the availability. Okay, so we're all set here. You go down and you key in the code down here into the space. And then you click continue. At this point, you just choose a template. Scroll through and find one that you like. Click continue. And then just click start blogging. Now this isn't going to be a comprehensive tutorial on how to use Blogger. There is a tutorial you can find on the Blogger site that shows you how to set it up. But basically, you can start posting here and you just 
post an article in, and then we're going to link back to our null from here. Okay, so there's our post entered. Now, I've already done this during the tutorial. You'll notice that I linked to my WordPress blog. I'm just going to show you how to do the same thing with a blogger blog. Okay, so we pasted our article in here. Now all we have to do is link back to our blog. So we can do that within the article. You can just do the same thing. For more garden, gardening facts, see my null. Okay, then we get the link to our null. So let's go back here, go to my nulls. Then all we do is we copy the link location. This is in Firefox. And in Internet Explorer, I think it just copy link. Go back and we just highlight our text here. And then right here, this is how we create a link. So just click on that. And then we just paste our URL in there. Click OK. And now we're linking back. Okay, so then we just click Publish Post. Now if we view our blog in a new window, okay, here's our post. Down here is our link, and if we click on that, it takes us to our null. So this is a simple way to take advantage of the traffic going both ways. Now you will have AdSense and product links supposedly on your null and you can do the same thing on your blog just by creating a blog that has both useful information and has some product reviews on it and some recommendation for products. Now the reason this is so powerful is because you get traffic going both ways. You get traffic going to your blog and you get traffic going to your null. The null traffic gets funneled to your blog. The blog traffic gets funneled to your null. And nulls are relatively new on the internet and they're very popular. So once you get indexed and you have it on the new nulls page, you're going to get quite a bit of traffic. Also remember that content is like search engine candy. So the more pages you get on there in your null and in your blog, the more visitors you're going to get. Because you get more visitors, you're going to get more clicks on your AdSense ads. And since they will be targeted visitors, since you're going to get most of your traffic from the search engine, you're likely to get some affiliate sales or your own product sales if you have your own products on there as well. So what you're going to want to end up doing is creating more nulls on the same subject and point them to your blog. You can also create nulls on other subjects and create a blog for that subject as well. And before you know it, you'll have a passive income stream from AdSense and from some sales that come off of any affiliate products that you have on your blog. So that's it. That's how you can set up a simple income stream without having to pay for anything. The only thing you may have to pay for is articles if you don't write them yourself. But if you're good at that, then there's no need to spend any money outsourcing. Now that concludes the video series on Google Nulls.